So here I have some of my large collection of Reader's Digest magazines. So I have them all saved up. I have not read even close to all of these. Um, I'm not sure how far they date back to. So from 2015. That's probably the earliest one. 2015 on. And what I would like to look at is the particular uh, section that they have in each issue. Okay. Um, and it's this little, they have these little subjects or um, sections that they have in each issue, I believe. And the one that I would like to look at is the one titled Photos of Lasting Interest. Okay. So, for example, this is the first one. This issue is from October of 2018. issue that is on page 20. So, let's see, page 20. Let's have a look at the picture. Okay. So maybe you can see it a little better at this angle here. This one is titled, Their Corner of the Sky. And it says in the Altai region of the southern, I'm sorry, of southern Siberia, is famous for things that fly. Here. Those white specks are butterflies. Some of the more than 150 species attracted to the area's humid summers. The hulking metal objects on the ground were airborne once too. They are metal, I'm sorry, they are pieces of rockets that plummeted to earth after launching from Russia's um, Baikonur Cosmodrome. Having a rocket remnant land in your yard isn't for everyone, but the locals make the best of it. These men are scavenging for high-grade titanium and aluminum alloys to sell. Some locals have recycled the pieces into garages, sheds, and fences. It just goes to show that one person's space junk is another person's treasure. Okay. So I thought I'd go through and and take a look at each issue's photo. So let's see, this issue is from November of 2017. Photo of lasting interest is on page 30. Okay, and there it is. You see it here, the airplane with all the birds around. 
so it says feathered flight attendants. We've been sharing the sky with its native aviators since the Wright brothers took off in 1903. Mostly we come in peace. Roaring engines keep the majority of birds at bay, and pilots do their best to avoid wildlife. When bird strikes do happen, there are about 11,000 in the United States each year. They rarely imperil the plane. If you are curious, the FAA keeps track of every strike at wildlife.faa.gov. Astonishingly, even this Delta flight touched down without incident at Reagan National Airport in Washington, D.C. Fortunately, the birds were safe that day, too. Okay, that's another cool picture. one you can see is a little beat up, but we don't mind that, right? This issue is from November of 2016. The way that page is still in the book. The photo is on page 40. Okay, very cool. Okay. So in this picture, it's titled, Making Waves. Factory workers wearing traditional leaf hats mend fishing nets in the coastal city of Bac Lu, Vietnam. The workers knit speedily, says photographer Li Huang Long, and employ tiny needles to weave nets tight enough to catch the various species of shrimp, fish, and crabs that keep the local economy afloat. As they work, heaps of netting mound behind them, like the waves in which they'll soon be deployed. It's a beautiful picture. Okay, so this issue is from September of 2015, and hopefully this one has, yes, a photo of lasting interest on page 96. Photography collection uh, consists primarily of black and white prints of dark subjects, 
like war, famine, poverty, and neglect. For some visual relief, I approached Tom Mangelson. I approached Tom Mangelson years ago, and this is um, Marianne Golone, Golon, director of photography at the Washington Post, speaking here. I approached Tom Mangelson years ago to buy one of his images. When I chose this photo of a silverback gorilla running through the green mountains of Rwanda, Rwanda, he laughed and said, Of all the photographs in my gallery, you have selected the only war picture. (laughs) The silverback is charging a younger male who had shown interest in one of the females. I still find this image soothing. Okay. Let's see if I'm going to open these ones or not. I'm not sure. Let's look at this one. So this one is an issue from March of 2019. Hopefully they didn't stop um, making it. That's a shame. That was a nice section there. So far I've seen them in every one. I don't see it in this one. Alright. Let's have a look at this one. This one is from January of 2017. Okay, reader favorites. Photo of lasting interest on page 24. I think I read this one before in a video. So we probably looked at this picture together before. You can see here, it's a bunch of crystals. Cave of Crystals. It's titled Inside Earth. Since 2000, more than 600,000 years after some of these crystal beams formed, humans have been exploring the Cueva de los Cristales, an underground crystal incubator, 1,000 feet below Mexico's Naika Mountain. The protective suite tells all about the risk. Temperatures here scorch up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, and humidity consistently hovers between 90 and 100 percent. A human without adequate gear, an ice-cold suit, and a cool air breathing system would succumb to the climate in minutes. Hmm. Okay. I know I read some of this issue in the past. I may not have looked at the photo though. Uh, This issue is from April of 2019. Let's see if they have it. Hmm, I don't know, I don't see it in this 
one either. Maybe they don't put it in each one. I just hope they didn't stop at some point. I don't see it there. Okay, this issue is from November of 2019. should have looked through these to see if they all have the photos. This one is from September of 2020. Looks like it's some time after 2019. Maybe they stopped putting the photos in there. Okay, this one is from 2015. All right, let's see if this one has it. Okay, let's see. Photo of lasting interest is on page 96. There it is. Okay, this looks like a person riding their bike. But let's see what the caption says. Photograph by Henri Cartier-Bresson, chosen by Nigel Parry. So it says, as a teenager in Yorkshire, England, I would while away my lunch breaks with my nose buried in photo books. And this photo always stuck in my mind for its cleverness. It's essentially a play with lines. They transport the eye around the rectangle and back to the human element. Clearly, a uh, Cartier-Bresson composed it and waited for the decisive moment in which an element of life, it could easily have been a dog or an old lady or a running child, injected itself into the perfect, irritatingly elegant composition to complete this celebration of both photographer and photograph. Pure genius. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. I'm trying to go back. issues before um, 2019. So this next issue here, this is from April of 2016. I love this one with all the sponges on it. Let's see that. Okay, the photo of last interest. It's on page 22. Okay, we see that here. Okay, this is titled Miracle in the Desert. As two figures in burkas of cerulean blue 
stand out against a desolate landscape in Afghanistan, framed, sorry, framed against dusty peaks, one woman faces the cameras as the other unrolls a blanket on the ground. Photographer Lindsay Adario, on assignment for National Geographic, stopped short as she and her translator came upon the scene in Badak, I'm sorry, Badakhshan province. Women are rarely seen without a man, but there they were, a mother preparing to deliver the child of her daughter whose husband had gone to get help when their car broke down on the way to the hospital. Happily, Adario was able to ferry the family to a medical facility a few hours away where the young woman had a healthy baby girl. Oh, I love that one. I really like that one. Okay. one from February of 2017. Okay. Okay, the photo of lasting interest is on page 22. is titled The First Flock. Um, if President Trump is looking for a warm and fuzzy cost savings plan, he might follow President Wilson's lead. Wilson imported this flock of sheep in 1918 to reduce the White House gardening staff and economize during World War I. The South Lawn seemed to thrive under its four-legged groundskeepers. Even better, at auction, their wool raised almost $53,000 for the Red Cross. Adjusted for, for inflation, that's about $850,000. from February of 2016. Okay, the photo of lasting interest is on page 28. Okay, looks like it's the beetle. Meet the Beatles. Twen I'm sorry, TV variety show host Ed Sullivan made his studio audience promise not to scream. Nevertheless, 728 lucky fans, chosen from among 50,000, started shrieking the second the Beatles took the stage on February 9th of 1964 and didn't stop for the entirety of the group's five-song set. After hours of rehearsals, 
one of which is pictured here, the Fab Four's first live American show grabbed a remarkable 73 million viewers, a number still considered one of the largest of all time. Ray Block, Ed Sullivan's musical director, was one of the few in attendance immune to Beatlemania. The only thing that's different is the hair, he told reporters afterward. I give them a year. <laughs> okay, so there are the Beatles. See, that's Paul McCartney, John Lennon, um, George Harrison, and who's the last one? <laughs> who's the last beetle? I can't remember. Yep. R Ringo Starr, that's it. <laughs> Couldn't think of it. I'm sure some of you were shouting at your phones. It's Ringo Starr. Okay, this one is from August of 2016. I'm just glad I thought of his name without having to Google it. <laughs> I've been very disappointed in myself. Alright, let's see. are really stuck together. Okay. So this one does have it. It's on page 30. Okay, there we are. Wow, look at that picture. Astonishing America. When winter winds pour in, the Great Lakes are easily mistaken for oceans. And yes, they are. I'm sure if you know them well, you know that. I think I've only visited them twice, but they were very sort of massive. Um, living near Lake Erie, Photographer Dave Sanford has been making a visual study of the liquid peaks that result when gale force gusts sculp surface water into towering waves up to 25 feet high. Because Erie is the shallowest of the Great Lakes, it is also the most temperamental. Of the 8,000 shipwrecks estimated to speckle the lakes, a fourth are thought to lie below Erie. Yes, when I went to one of those gift shops around there, there was a lot of uh, little sort of souvenirs and books and things to read about lots of different uh, shipwrecks. It's a beautiful picture, though. Okay. So this issue here, this one is from June of 2016. And the photo of lasting interest is on page 22. Okay, here we are. 
that's another beautiful picture. So it says, when worlds collide, hoofing through the woods of a Beijing suburb, a flock of sheep is struck dumb in its tracks as clouds of smog envelop it. Not an unheard of turn of events when, according to the World Health Organization, Air pollution in China's capital has climbed more than 25 times above the safe level. On bad days, factories close, children miss school, and a noxious fog spreads over provinces hundreds of miles outside the city. Still, the flock must go on to greener pastures undeterred by the haze ahead. Oh, they're so beautiful. Well, as you can hear, someone is doing some yard work outside. Let's see if they're going to continue. It's the season for all of the motors and all that. <laughs> it's a little hard to record. It starts getting warmer. I think they're gonna keep on going, so... Well, let's see. Let's see if it becomes a problem. Okay, this is uh, the next issue here. Look at one more for now. This is from uh, March of 2015, this issue. Okay. It's called A World of Wonder. Let's see. Um, does it have the picture? Well, they left it out here. I wonder why. It's from 2015. Reader favorites. I don't know. Maybe this one has a lot of pictures in it. What does wonder look like? Hmm. Nine photographers offer their version of awe and surprise. So maybe that's why this one has a lot of different photos in it. Not sure how well you can see these. Let's see. Let's look at this one here. NASA. This one is by Alan Gold, Alan Goldsmith, 2012. In fall of 2012, the space shuttle Endeavour was transported from the Los Angeles airport and through the streets to the Science Museum. Even though I was sick with the flu, I made myself ride my bike to go see it pass by. I parked but couldn't get through the crowds, so I ducked into an alley, and I was running down it. As I was running down it, I looked behind me and saw this. I used my iPhone to take the photo, uh, knowing this shuttle had been in space and was now in, Los An in the Los Angeles streets made it crazy and wonderful to witness. You can see the rocket ship there going past the alley. That's a cool picture. Let's see. Let's see one down here. The man with the wrinkly back. Okay. 
Okay. This one says, um, Ed Kashi, 2002. I guess these are the photographers. The late Jose Martin Ribeiro Nunez was a boat pilot in Aracaju, Brazil. After he guided a ship through the harbor, he'd dive off and swim six to nine miles back to shore. He was 74 when I met him. He did this job for 40 years. He walked around town barefoot, and he drank water from only the river or the sea. He was a character from a different time. It's nice. And we'll look at this. Let me know that's Robin Williams here on this side. This little girl here. Let's see. Right here, the photographer is Glenn Glasser, 2012. In Delaware, Emma Lavelle showed off her magic arms. 3D printed braces that supported her muscles, which were weakened by a rare disorder. She was an extraordinary kid who exuded a wonderful sense of life. That's nice. And we'll read about Robin Williams here. Photographer Mary Ellen Mark, 1998. Robin Williams was a magical wonder, a mix of brilliant talent and incredible energy. It was hard to keep up with him. Ideas kept popping into his head. We worked for two hours, and he never stopped moving. I was exhausted, but I'm sure he could have done at least two more. Nice. That was that little section of this issue. Okay, I think um, these are all in the packages still. Well, let's have a look at this one here. This one is from September of 2016. is um, page 34. Okay, that's a cold picture. All the map going on there. Okay, okay, so this is the space equation. American scientists pose for Life magazine on October 10th, 1957. Alongside satellite orbit equations drawn up by astronomer Samuel Herrick, the photo was taken just six days after the Soviet Union had launched Sputnik 1, the world's first human-made satellite and a win in the earliest round of the space race. NASA was created the following October, and within months, the United States was also in orbit. On January 31, 1958, NASA launched the Explorer 1 satellite from Cape Canaveral, Florida. What a map equation is going. They're on ladders. Very cool. Let's see, do I have more from... I do I have a few more here. Let's see. This issue, I can't even read the year anymore. 
molds and beat up March of 2017. This one might have, uh, let's see, it might be hiding right there. The other contents page. Okay, photo of lasting interest on page 28. Let's see what page is that? behavior since 1995. One fascinating finding. When provisions run low, Kingo will sometimes steal from his own family. No wonder he keeps up to four wives at a time. <laughs> Maybe three more from earlier years. This one is from De uh, January 2016. Okay. Okay, let's see. Does it have okay, a photo of lasting interest? Page 110. And here we are. Here's the photo of lasting interest. Photograph by Siros Istvan, chosen by Omid Safi. Okay. Among images of Syrian refugees in a makeshift camp inside a Budapest train station. It was the black and white photo that grabbed my heart, a moment of affection, tenderness, and love in the midst of months of chaos. In their love, their tenderness, and their hope, there is hope for all of us. in the tent. Marley. I know there's the movie out now. 
this quote is, one good thing about music, when it hits, you feel no pain. This issue is from October of 2016. Okay, and the photo of lasting interest is on page 24. me with a salute, says Perlmutter, now 83. Then they went right back to being kids. It's one of my favorite shots. I am. Kids will be kids. That's so cute. Very, very cute.
photograph by Joe Rosenthal. Let's see it here. Chosen by Paul Taylor. It says, when I saw this photo, which was taken during, during World War II at the Battle of Iwo Jima, it appealed to my patriotism. I used it in my dance. Okay, so Paul Taylor, who was uh, writing this little insert, um, is a choreographer. He says, I used it in my dance from sea to shining sea as one of the living pictures, creating a live image on stage identical to the photo to symbolize the American spirit. Another little look there. All right. So I guess that's the last book that I will look at today. so many of these that I haven't read. And I know that some of you guys really enjoy for me to read through these. So I promise I'll come back to this little collection here that I have. are like perfect little magazines. I like to take them to the beach. Maybe. I usually don't end up reading them because I'm just going in the water or things like that. <laughs> but I bring them along just in case. So, uh, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed. <laughs>